Well, there you see a 233-point rally on the data today, and even with substantial gains in the market today, investors are still feeling a quite uh, uncertainty and some skittishness about where to move their money now. The CNBC Investor Task Force is here. That's why we're here to help. Phil Town is with us, investing guru and author of Rule Number One, along with Manny Schifferies, executive editor of Kiplinger's Personal Finance. Nice to have you with us, gentlemen. Welcome to the program. Nice to Thank you. you. Maria. Phil, let me kick it off with you. Tell me after the, I'm so sorry, after the week that was, and we see so many wild moves, what would you recommend investors we for? We love for the long this term. kind of stuff. You like it. Yeah, we like it. First off, rule number one comes from Warren Buffett, who said there's two rules of investing. First rule, don't lose money. And the second <laughs> rule is don't, don't forget the money. first rule. Okay, so the first rule is don't lose money. That's actually really a practical way to think about investing when you're in a market that's controlled 85% by institutional fund managers, which means for the little guy, if they start to get out, we just bail. <laughs> we are out of there in right. eight seconds, which gives us a tremendous advantage in the market. Right, right now. So you're event. saying don't do anything or you're saying look for opportunities? No, I'm saying first off, get the heck out because we don't know how far this is going to go down. We don't have any idea at all. So we don't try to guess about the market, try to figure out what direction it might be going. We're strictly watching what the big guys are doing and then reacting to that because we're little. So one advantage we have, us little guys, is we can move out in eight seconds. It takes them, I don't know, weeks to get fully dispersed. Right. So this is a great opportunity for us to get in cash, wait patiently, see where the bottom is, and they start to buy back in, load up the truck. Manny, what do you think? Tell us the uh, right strategy in this volatile market. Uh, Maria, I want Phil to call me and tell me when he identifies the bottom. <laughs> I'll tell you, real easy when I identify the bottom, Manny. It's when the big guys are buying back in. Everything okay. has changed so dramatically in the last 30 or 40 years as all this 401k money came into the market. Now, $14 trillion is controlled by institutions. And when they move, they can move down, they can move up. But the little guy trying to guess what direction they're going is crazy. Mm -hmm. Never going to happen. We just follow them. That's all. Maria, Maria as, as, I was watching, as I was watching the market today, I just kept shaking my head. I thought to myself, this is so easy. You just wait for the Fed to act. Uh, you, the bear market, the correction ends, <laughs> and you're off to the races again. Uh, I don't think it's quite that simple, though. Uh, and uh, frankly, uh, if I were an investor now, I'd be focusing on quality. I'd be focusing on large cap companies. I'd be focusing on companies that pay dividends. Oh, and I wouldn't try to time the markets. Well, but Manny, the problem with that strategy is uh, the fact that this week it was the quality companies that traded down because you had so much pressure on these quant funds. They had to raise cash. What are they going to sell if they have to raise cash? They're going to sell the stocks that they can get in and out of quickly, even if those companies are the quality companies, because those are the companies you can get in and out quickly. So, Maria, you're saying that you should yep. base your investment decisions and your investment strategy on one week's worth of activity? It's one week, for heaven's sake. Absolutely. If you're asking me my opinion, my opinion is you have to be in this market for the long no term. No one can time the short-term fluctuations of the market. I'm not going to be jumping out just because the big guys are. I it, have to have a strategy, and I have to ha be, have conviction about what I'm investing in. I have you a great strategy. I have a great that, strategy. Give you my opinion. Invest for the long Go term. Ahead. Invest for the long that's term. Don't try strategy. to time the market. That's, just that's, terrific. that's my strategy. That's, yeah, that's exactly just terrific, strategy. you guys. You invest for the long term and you're guaranteed over a 40 year period of time to have about an 8% return. But in any 20 year period of time, Manny, you should know this. Your rate of return could be zero, and no. I know that yeah, because 20, I got in mutual funds in 1966. You know Listen, what else? That's I got in really funds misleading in information. And I put in $600, and, and 18 years later, I had $400 in that mutual fund. Wow. Your advice for long-term yeah. investing there's, is there's going to no kill a lot of you know There is no 20-year period in which you've lost money in the stock market. You are full of baloney, man. Uh, 1907 my, to 1935, I, 1907 to 1942, 1965 knows to 1983. Owning stocks over the long so you're term predicting a depression. will beat and outperform every other <laughs> asset class. Give me, come on, except are you disagreeing for, with except that? Except for doing this one little thing, and that is buy a really great company when it's on sale, and then yeah. get out every time the big guys oh, bail. Oh, come on, get out every time. Are you going to be a trader, or are you going to be an investor? You're going to be both. You're going to invest in the sense that you're going to buy great companies only when they're on sale, and then you're going to realize that this market is controlled by a handful of people, relatively know. speaking. I don't and when they start to bail that. out, it's so easy to get out. You just use tools that are sitting on your computer, and everybody out there can do this. It's just a matter of learning how to do it what and about, not what, following this buy and hold forever stuff. What not about, even Warren Buffett does that. What about the strategy of owning quality companies, okay? And when you see a company, you, you come up with a price, and when it gets battered enough, you want to own it for the long term. I'm all you don't with want that. to pick it's hairs. The only problem is I don't care how wonderful the business is or how attractive the price. If the big guys are still selling, it can go down another 50%. And that's the lesson of 2000 to 2003. And those of us who got out 
survived all that looking good. Maria. So what I'm going to encourage you guys to do is learn a little bit about this stuff. Maybe and avoid, avoid, avoid this watch. guy's You're advice. Here. No Maria, matter what, Maria, avoid I, this advice. I did want to make one point, and that is that investors who are <laughs> counting on the Fed to rescue them, to uh, send the stock market up to new heights, need to be concerned about that, need, need to assume that it's not a done deal. Uh, the Fed started cutting again, uh, started cutting for the last time in uh, January of 2001. Uh, they continued to cut till June of 2003. Meanwhile, the market continued to fall until October of 2002. So if you think that uh, the Fed coming in to cut, to cut rates guarantees that the market is going to resume its recovery, that, that's no sure thing. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that is a very good point. And, and uh, it, it's important to have that context to really understand what's going on. Gentlemen, good to have you on the program. Thanks, Thanks so very much. <laughs> <laughs> that was lovely. Up next, the market's been asking for it, you know, and the Fed delivered. So are more rate cuts on the way? See what pro uh, easing professionals are buying and how you can match their strategy. We're back in a minute with that. And then, well, today's discount rate reduction is helping